There are a few dominant methods of implementing physics in video games, all of which strive to achieve that ultra-realistic feel and look that every game wants to have. Back when limitations of the hardware that games were being made for, combined with the small capacity of cartridges and discs that games were being printed on, actual physics engines were minimal at best, and most enemy deaths, explosions, and other interactions with the game world that were triggered by the player were executed with canned animations. This was satisfactory for a while, and generally would get across the illusion of being in an actual world and affecting it the way you want. Plus, they took up far less space to store and less time to program than actual physics-based systems. When these predetermined animations were done well and fit the actions that were most likely to trigger them, lots of the time players couldn't tell the difference, especially before the mid-90s when players didn't really have much to compare to. As a gamer in the 90s watching enemies fall to the ground two or three different ways every time and seeing structures fall down in controlled predictable ways identical to the way they just collapsed last time was just as impressive as anything else. Did I realize I was watching a predetermined animation that would have occurred the same way regardless of what angle the main character was at when the event was triggered? Maybe at some level, sure, but it just didn't matter. The fact that this could be done at all was impressive enough. This didn't last terribly long though as games like Jurassic Park Trespasser and others were implementing what would colloquially be called ragdoll physics, which could depend on a system of rules, not unlike the laws of Isaac Newton, to determine how the characters and enemies would react to outside forces, and they weren't canned, predetermined animations. Ragdoll physics were revolutionary for this change and used the realistic system of bones, joints, and hinges that made up the character models to approximate actual physics which would impress gamers everywhere in the late 90s. The ragdoll physics were eventually a culmination of calculations of velocity, starting positions of objects, and the force behind whatever was interacting with them to trigger the reaction that added up to the interactions that we would see on screen. This obviously was going to be more than a gimmick and would start a series of evolutions and advancements that would lead to the complex particles, liquids, and projectile physics that we take for granted in modern games today. Perhaps one of the most notable advancements in game physics truly occurred in the early 2000s with games like Half-Life, Elder Scrolls, Morrowind, and others applying applying these rules of real-ish physics on everything in the environment, not just on characters and objects that were meant to be interacted with. This would lead to players being able to pick up books, chairs, other objects, and truly manipulate the world around them, and thusly these complex physics engines were no longer tied to just death animations of enemies and explosions, but they were starting to truly open up the entire world with which the player could interact. Soon after, these universal physics were becoming far more commonplace as physics engines became more accessible to developers and more standardized. Developers were regularly being provided physics engines to work with instead of having to make their own from scratch, which kept development time from skyrocketing. Games like Portal weren't just using physics to simulate realism, but they were having fun with physics engines and twisting them around to create revolutionary mechanics like the wormholes in Portal and Portal 2 that entire games could be based on. The plethora of physics-based experimental games in the PC gaming space further added to the standardization of physics engines and the accessibility of developers to rightfully tweak them a bit here or there to add a little humor or a more arcadey feeling to their games. Implementing complex physics engines in games was easy by this time, as the modern hardware of the era was finally providing the space to allow it. It was far more common to see realistic physics in games than the canned animations of before, as the workload disparity between the two has been flipped from where it once was. Physics engines were so common and well understood by developers by the mid-2000s that it was actually easier to implement those that had already been configured from before development on the game even began. Now that doesn't mean predetermined animations no longer had a place. At times, even today, they are still used for specific reasons, but having separate teams develop physics engines that just get reused and tweaked over time had certainly emerged as the go-to option for nearly every major video game project going forward. As more and more giant companies with large research and development budgets continue to make advancements in game physics, we will accordingly see more and more realistic reactions from different forms of matter in game. Smoke and liquids are currently the two areas seeing the biggest leaps right now. Obviously, smoke and liquid have more 
variables to consider, so nailing down those two forms of matter is going to probably be one of the final mountains to climb for the engineers that are toiling away at perfecting games physics today. The more variables there are to consider, the more computing power is needed, and that means more innovations to circumvent maxing out modern hardware's capabilities while still providing convincing physical movement as needed. NVIDIA's relatively new Physics Flex system shows off some of the simulations that are quite promising for the future despite the fact that this technology is already a few years old. The benefits can be seen in PC games where the tech is being fully utilized and still looks impressive in 2018. Future projects are certainly looking promising as well from similar companies who have a stake in the market. Regardless of what the future of video game physics will bring us, we can probably make a safe bet that it will continue to stand on the shoulders of the ragdolls of the late 90s and the innovations that came after. As dirt, hair, smoke, liquids, and particles continue to be more and more refined and provide more realistic immersive experiences for gamers, the expectations will also continue to grow. Gaming is a medium that is always getting more complex and rarely stagnates in terms of tech and performance. Hopefully, as particles get smaller and our hardware gets more capable, everything continues to scale well so developers aren't spending 10 years on every game and the cost of software isn't getting jacked up too high to keep up with the costs of development. This is still a relatively new medium of entertainment and as demand for more technologically advanced experiences grows, so will the price tags along the way. That's just how the world works. Everything does appear to be on a nice, slow and steady track for the time being though, so as gamers we can, at least for now, continue to sit back and enjoy the view. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.